Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here and welcome to day one of the 10 day bead soup challenge. So today we're going to be making some fun little heart pendants on a tiger tail cord. These are based on a couple that I made many years ago. I used to do a lot of workshops with kids so I would have done like the outside shape and got them to fill them in with beads. Uh, if you don't have the tiger tail uh, no problem you can just do the pendant it's fine for the challenge. And what you're going to need for the project is uh, your beads of course so I'm using seed beads for the inside of the heart and then around the outside you can also use seed beads or you can mix them with larger beads. I'm using 20 gauge wire for the outside of the heart. You could use 18 if you want. To string the beads I'm using 24 gauge wire and then for the necklace cord I have my tiger tail. It's just a plastic coated stainless steel wire and then if you're using that you'll need your crimps. A lobster clasp or any kind of clasp I use a split ring and sometimes I add an extender chain. You're going to need a round form to make the top part of the heart and you're going to need your tools, flat pliers, round pliers, cutters and then I have crimpers to uh, pinch the crimps shut. So to get started we're going to take a five to six inch piece of the 20 gauge wire and just in the middle of the wire we want to make a little bit of a circle here. So we're just going to bend it this way and that way. And then what you want to do is point these wires up. So we're going to just hold this in place, bend one straight up and then the other side we're just going to take this and bend it straight up. So it looks something like that. And then what you want to do from there is just form the top round parts of the heart. So take a round form. It can be a marker or a sharpie. Hold this in place and just bring it around one way and then flip it and bring it around the other way. If you want the circles to be a little larger just use the larger end of the um, marker it's fine. So we're going to bring that in there and then you want to straighten these out a little bit at the same time. And then from there we'll get our flat pliers and just make sure this one is perpendicular to the uh, heart because you want a wire to go through there. And then adjust it to the size that you want. Just bring it around. Make sure it's somewhat centered. To finish the end you're just going to bend one of these around. So just bend it around here. Get your cutters and give it a little clip so it's flush in there. So then we're going to just press that down and bring it in a little bit to make sure that end is closed in there. And then you can just give it a double check, little quality control to make sure it's even. And then you're going to take this end and also wind it around and give it a little clip so it's flush as well. So once you have those two ends flush just poke it in there. So now you're ready to string it with some beads. So depending on the size of your heart take about a 12 to 15 inch piece of 24 gauge wire and what you want to do to start is just string it through that hole here. So just string it through there and then what you're going to do is you're going to put beads above and below. So position this maybe about four inches from the end and then just decide what kind of seed beads you want to put in. I'm just going to for this project do random colors but you can do the rainbow like I did in a previous design. So just start grabbing your beads and just string them along. So we'll just put a few. You can always stay in the same uh, family of colors if you like to keep it somewhat consistent but you don't have to have a pattern. So we're just going to go across and see how many you need across there. So probably about five or six and we'll just keep putting our beads on there. So that one and then this one. So we'll just have a look and see how it looks. That looks good and then we'll do the same on the other side. So let's just go ahead and take this one and wind it around here. And 
and then you could do it a couple of times and if you want you can just bring it up to the front and then what I'm going to do is go across here and I'm going to work my way down and then I'll put a separate wire to get that little area there. So, so once we have six on this side, we're just going to wind it around. Now the number of beads might vary depending on the size of the beads because sometimes they are irregular sizes. So now we're going to fill up this length of wire. So once you have enough beads across there, same thing, you're just going to take your wire and go around and then back out again and then we'll fill up that length of wire and you'll see as we go down we're reducing the number of beads and say you just have a small space to fill in just use a smaller bead and then same thing we're just going to go in there and wind it through a couple of times and then come back up so we can do another line across. Now if you want you could just like pull it straight up and then just kind of hold it in place and give it a little kind of nudge that way and it just makes it sort of more on that kind of surface level but it doesn't really matter once you have all the beads in. So you'll see some of the beads are matte, some are shiny, some are metallic. Just use a nice variety of beads and if you keep them in the same color family it's all going to look really nice together or just use totally random beads. You might have to use smaller beads when you get to the end because for them to uh, fit in there. So we put I put a couple smaller ones and then we're just going to bring this one around and then we just really need to put one more bead on the end. So I'm going to take uh, this one, bring it up and I'll put just a little round metallic bead on the end there just to finish it off. Just kind of stick it right in there to get it in place. You can just push the wire through there and then pull it snugly in place there because you really want it to sit right at the end. Bring the end around, give it a little clip. And just push it in there so it's not pokey and then just make sure these are positioned well and you can always like adjust them a little bit if you have to push them in place. Now we have the bottom part of the heart there and now we have to do these little areas at the top. So same thing just keep on beading. So now we're down to four beads there so I would put three across the top and then we're good to uh, finish that side. So now we have our last three beads across the top and we're just going to take this end and bring it through and just finish it off and we'll start a new wire on the other side. So just bring it right around, give it a clip and get your flat pliers to pinch it in place. And then we want to get another wire to do across there. You don't need a big piece. You can take a scrap of the 24 gauge wire and just start by putting it through here so it's going to hold nicely in place. So just bring that end through up here. Stick your end in just in there and pull it tight. So you'll just clip it but you want to make sure that it's tucked in so it's not going to scratch your skin. Actually it's probably a good idea we're going to wind it around one more time on this side so it ends up coming over on this side here and now we're going to bead it. So even though there's four beads here we can fit five on this side because I've used different size beads. So we're going to wind it around and then we just have our last row to do across the top. So we just have to finish this one end off so just take the end push it through here, grab your flat pliers and then just really tug it around so it is nice and tight in place. Just flip it over like that, give it a little clip and pinch the end in. So we have our cute little pendant now. You can just push the beads in as you like and then you have a choice. Either you can put a couple of jump rings, put it on a cord, or the way I did the original design was I got some tiger tail 
and we're just going to put it through one of these. So depending on at what level that you want it to be hanging, you can put it in the second or third row. So if we put it in the third row, we're just going to take this and you want to make sure this row is straight and we're just going to feed it through the row of beads and you might have to wiggle them a little bit to make sure they're lined up because we want it to go right through all of these beads pushing it through and then it's come through the end there so then we have our pendant which will just hang down right like that and then make sure it's centered so just bring this around and center it and then at that point you can just go ahead and put your beads you can crimp it in place if you want to but it's not absolutely necessary but if you want to crimp it there to hold it in place you can so just put one crimp bead on either side of the heart make sure this is centered and for the just to hold the heart in place you don't need to use crimping tools you can just use your flat pliers and give it a gentle little pinch here too make sure it's in the position you want and give it a gentle little pinch so that's just going to make sure it stays in place and now we can add our beads so either you can continue with your seed beads or you can put all kinds of other fancy beads so I might put a mix of the seed beads and the other beads so here's my other bead soup so it's just a matter of finding some beads in there that are going to match uh, because I've mixed everything together it might be a little tricky. I like metal beads so I might want to take out a couple of metal beads and then I'm just going to do it the same on either side so I'm just going to choose beads that will go on either side. So if you have one of these little beading trays they're very useful. I just bought this one at the dollar store. Make your pattern how you like. I often struggle with bead choices but uh, take your time figure out what you like the look of and just go ahead and string the beads on the first side and then the second side. So once you have your first side strung you're going to get one of these tiny little crimp beads. This is a two millimeter smooth crimp bead and then you can take your crimping tools and then just take this you put it in the little nook there crimp it and then you just bend it around in the second one and there are tutorials online of how to use these crimping tools and then we're going to do the other side. So once both ends are crimped you're going to take another crimp and stick it on the end here and then you're going to take your hook put the hook on there bend it back through the crimp just stick it back through there and then again get your crimping tools to pinch it in place and then we're going to do the same on the other side we're just going to get the crimp put it on so on the other side I use a split ring but if you have a preferred clasp that you like to use go for it we're just going to stick that back through there and then again get your crimping tools give it a pinch rotate it and then pinch it up and then if you like we're going to put an extension chain on there I just like this uh, especially when I'm selling necklaces I prefer to put an extension chain just so there's a little bit of extra uh, leeway for the person so it's going to fit properly slide it onto the split ring so there you have your beautiful beaded heart necklace and if you prefer you can use less beads on the cord or you can fill up the whole cord with beads. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more DIY wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire work, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my wire work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below to my mailing list, I'll send you my free Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.